I remember the day Jack entered my life vividly, almost like it was yesterday. I was sitting in a quaint cafe, sipping on their cheapest coffee, lost in my thoughts. Then he walked in, resembling a character from a movie. There were no fancy lights or music, just the soft jingle of the doorbell and the scent of stale coffee mixed with his aftershave. Mind if I sit here, he asked, flashing me a charming smile and gesturing to the empty chair across from me. Go ahead, I replied, trying to maintain my composure despite my surprise at his sudden appearance. We clicked instantly, like we'd known each other forever. Our interests aligned perfectly, from binge-watching cheesy TV shows to debating over the best pizza topping, pineapple, no doubt. Soon, we were more than casual acquaintances. It felt like we were meant to be together. As our relationship deepened, marriage became a topic of discussion. But then came the challenging part, meeting his parents. Let me tell you, they were quite the handful. Meeting them for the first time felt like entering a lion's den with a juicy steak strapped to my back. His parents had this way of smiling while silently judging you, determining if you were up to their standards. You're the one Jack can't stop talking about, huh? His mom said, her tone more frosty than friendly. Yep, that's me, I replied, doing my best to not let her intimidating aura affect me. His parents wasted no time expressing their desire for us to sign a prenup. I wasn't interested in their money, but their approach left a sour taste in my mouth. I'll sign your prenup, I told them, but here's the catch. If one of us cheats, the cheater owes $200,000. Jack looked stunned, as if I'd slapped him with a wet fish. Babe, I'd never cheat on you, he insisted, his expression dead serious. Yeah, well, my ex said the same thing before I caught him cheating, I shot back. It was either the deal or nothing. Eventually, Jack agreed, though his parents didn't seem too thrilled about it. We figured that settled the matter, but we were in for a surprise. One evening, we were curled up on our old squeaky couch. We always talked about replacing it, but it held too many memories to let go. The TV droned on in the background, but we were too wrapped up in planning our dream trip to Switzerland. We knew it would stretch our budget thin, but we were determined to make it happen. Picture it, Jack. The food, the wine, the art. We have to go, I exclaimed, excitement lighting up my eyes. Jack chuckled and pulled me closer. Linda, you had me at food, but let's face it. Our bank account is more suited for backyard camping than a fancy trip to Geneva, he said. I nudged him teasingly. Then we'll save up. We'll cut back on things we don't really need, like your video games, I said, pretending to be shocked. Not the video games. Take my shirts, my shoes, even my beloved coffee maker, but spare the games, he joked. We shared a laugh. That was us in a nutshell. Dreaming big while staying grounded in our simple life, and we were content. Our happiness didn't just lie in grand adventures. It was also in the everyday moments, like Jack's attempts at cooking breakfast on Saturdays. He wasn't a culinary master, but he had somehow perfected scrambled eggs and toast, which he proudly served with his less than perfect coffee. I'm feeling scrambled eggs today. What do you think? He'd ask, already making his way to the kitchen. Only if you promise not to burn the toast this time, I'd tease back. One day, as we tackled the dishes together, a mundane chore that felt special because we did it side by side, Jack approached a topic we'd been avoiding. Linda, we need to talk about, you know, starting a family, 
he said, breaking the comfortable silence. I paused, holding a plate in my hands. I know, it's just scary, isn't it? What if it doesn't happen for us? Jack turned to me, drying his hands on a towel. Then we'll face it together, together. But we won't know until we try, right? How hard can it be? He chuckled, a mix of nerves and affection in his tone. Famous last words. Huh, but that's us. Whatever life threw at us, we tackled it together. Even when his mom started dropping hints about wanting grandchildren every chance she got, we handled it. Linda, dear, when are you going to give me some grandbabies? You're not getting any younger, you know, she'd say. Her tongue sugary, but her message clear as day. I'd hold my tongue, flash a smile, and chirp, We're on it, right, Jack? And he'd chime in, Mom, chill out, okay? These things don't happen overnight. But as time passed, the pressure mounted. It wasn't just from his mom, but from us too. We longed for a family, but it wasn't falling into place as easily as we'd hoped. Since Sophia found a new hobby in making my life tough, our home felt like a war zone. Her sharp words, the main ammo, it all boiled over during one Sunday lunch, meant to be serene and easygoing. Right on cue, Sophia barged in, uninvited, just as we were about to dig in. The atmosphere turned tense the moment she stepped in, her eyes scanning the room like she was inspecting a battleground. Well, isn't this a quaint little setup? She sneered, eyeing the modest meal I'd whipped up. Quite the effort, Linda. Looks like you've been slaving away in the kitchen all morning. Trying to keep the peace, I mustered a smile. It's nothing fancy, Sophia, just something simple and quick. Please take a seat. As we settled at the table, she launched into her usual spiel. You know, Linda, Sophia began, her tone dripping with condescension. I was chatting with Mrs. Charlotte the other day, and she mentioned how her grandson just became a dad. It got me thinking, when are you and Jack going to give me some good news? Time's ticking, you know. My cheeks flushed with a mix of embarrassment and frustration. I glanced at Jack, hoping for some backup, but he suddenly seemed very engrossed in his menu. Mom, seriously, Jack finally mumbled, but it lacked conviction, and we all knew it. Undeterred, Sophia pressed on. I hate to be blunt, but you're not getting any younger. You work hard for your money. Why waste it on Linda if she can't fulfill her basic duties as a wife? Hiring help for cleaning and cooking would be much more efficient, don't you think? That was the last straw. Sophia, I'm doing my best here, I blurted out. It's not like I don't want kids. As for housework and cooking, I didn't realize marriage came with a job description. Sophia scoffed. Marriage isn't a free ride, Linda. You have responsibilities, and frankly, you're not meeting them. The air grew heavy with tension, and tears threatened to spill from my eyes. But what hurt the most wasn't Sophia's harsh words. It was Jack's silence. When he finally spoke, it wasn't in my defense. Mom's right. Maybe we should consider getting some extra help around here. It would take some weight off your shoulders, too, he said, his words feeling like a stab in the back. It was clear I was alone in this. In the days that followed, Sophia's visits became more frequent, and her criticisms sharper. She'd scrutinize every corner of the house, pointing out any flaw. You call this clean? She'd sneer. Looks like a pigsty to me. Then came the jabs about my appearance. Is that what you're wearing? A wife should dress to please her husband. No wonder Jack seems exhausted. He comes home to this. I try to stand up for myself. Sophia, I dress for myself, not Jack. 
and he's tired because he works hard, not because of my outfit. But it was pointless. Sophia had made up her mind about me, and nothing I said seemed to make a difference. Jack's lack of support hit me the hardest. Every night after his mom's departure, we'd end up arguing. Why won't you defend me, Jack? She's bulldozing over us, and you're just standing by. Linda, she's set in her ways. What do you expect me to do? Kick my own mom out? No, but I expect you to be my partner, to stand with me, not her. It became evident that this went beyond Sophia's disapproval. It was about us, our marriage, and whether we could withstand the onslaught of Sophia's criticisms. As weeks passed, it dawned on me that this wasn't just a passing phase. It was a full-blown assault. If we didn't take action soon, there might not be anything left to salvage. Things between Jack and me had turned frosty ever since Sophia ramped up her criticisms. But it wasn't just our home life feeling the strain. Jack himself had started behaving oddly, and it wasn't solely because of work stress. There was something else, something unsettling. It all began with his phone. Jack used to be open about it. We had no secrets. But then he began leaving the room whenever he received a call, and it was always from the same person, Paul from work. One evening, I tried to sound nonchalant and asked, Who's Paul from work? Jack visibly tensed up, a clear sign of nervousness. Oh, just a new guy at the office. Asks a lot of questions, he replied. But there were more changes. Jack, who never cared much about fashion, suddenly started paying attention to his appearance. The graphic tees and worn-out jeans disappeared, replaced by crisp shirts, slacks, and even cologne. Since when did you start smelling like a department store? I teased one morning, watching him style his hair differently. He just smirked. Can a guy switch things up every once in a while? No harm in that, right? Then there were the late nights at work, becoming more frequent. Another long one, babe, he texted. Sorry, this project is a killer. I'll be home soon, I promise, he reassured. But it would be well past midnight before I heard his keys jingle in the door. I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. It lingered like a shadow. That's when I made the decision to hire a private investigator. It felt like a scene from a cheesy TV show, but I needed to know for certain. The evidence arrived in a plain brown envelope, heartbreaking yet undeniable. Photos of Jack with another woman, their intimacy unmistakable, captured in moments that shattered our years together. But it was the recording that cut the deepest. Their conversations filled with affection and plans made it painfully clear. He was in love with her, or at least with someone else. I sat there, staring at the damning evidence before me, a chilling reality sinking in. This could be the key I needed if our marriage spiraled into a messy divorce. The photos captured stolen moments from our life together, while the recorded words betrayed every I love you he ever whispered in my ear. But I kept it all to myself, a heavy burden I chose to carry alone. I wasn't ready to confront him, not yet. I needed time to strategize, to navigate the collapse of our marriage while preserving my dignity. The days that followed passed in a blur. Jack maintained his facade, and I played the part of the beautiful wife, smiling outwardly while crumbling inside. Our conversations became a delicate dance around the truth, each word carefully chosen, every laugh forced. Are you okay, Jack? He would inquire, genuine concern lacing his voice. Yeah, just tired, you know. 
Work's been hectic, I'd respond, the lie bitter on my tongue. It seemed like just another ordinary day until I accidentally overheard a conversation that would change everything. As I passed by Jack's office, the door slightly ajar, their voices drifted out. It was Jack and his mother, Sophia, and their conversation wasn't casual. Their tones were serious, filled with purpose. I can't keep this up, Mom. It's not just about having kids anymore. I don't feel the same way about Linda. It's like we're living together as strangers, not as a married couple, Jack admitted, his voice heavy with exhaustion. Sophia's reply was cutting. Well, can you blame yourself? She hasn't given you a child, and what else has she really brought to this marriage? But let's not be hasty. My 65th birthday is approaching, and we wouldn't want to miss out on a generous gift from her, would we? Her cynicism felt like a stab in the heart. They were using me, planning to keep me around just long enough to benefit from a lavish birthday present before discarding me, I thought bitterly. Exactly, dear, just a bit longer, Sophia affirmed, her words dripping with malice. I stood there, stunned and furious. They were plotting to push me out of the family as effortlessly as crossing off an item on a shopping list. The pain ran deep, but it fueled a burning desire for vengeance within me. They thought they could manipulate me and discard me at their convenience. I was determined to prove that I wasn't just a pawn in their twisted game. A few days later, we gathered for a family dinner that felt more like a scripted performance than a meal. Sophia brought up her impending birthday with a smile that made my stomach churn. Leaning in, she asked, So, Linda dear, what do you have planned for my birthday? Something special, I hope? I met her gaze calmly. Actually, Sophia, I've been thinking of arranging a dinner at the city's most luxurious restaurant. An unforgettable evening, I replied. Her eyes gleamed with anticipation, and she exchanged a satisfied glance with Jack. They believed they had me cornered, but they didn't realize I was already two steps ahead. Oh, Linda, that sounds lovely. Just close family, you know, keep it intimate, Sophia said her voice oozing with insincerity. Absolutely, Sophia. We'll make it a memorable occasion, I replied, the words leaving a bitter taste in my mouth. The weeks leading up to Sophia's 65th birthday felt like a slow march towards a reckoning. Every smirk from her and every indifferent nod from Jack fueled my resolve. My plan was straightforward yet daring orchestrate a lavish dinner as a supposed gesture of affection, then unveil a monumental surprise. As guests streamed into the opulent dining room we had reserved for Sophia's celebration, anticipation hung heavy in the air. My pulse quickened, not from nerves, but from the excitement of what was to come. Sophia, relishing the spotlight, luxuriated in the grandeur of her surroundings, Oh, Linda, you've truly outdone yourself. This place is divine, she proclaimed loudly enough for neighboring tables to hear as we settled in. The evening unfolded with a peculiar cheer, typical of family gatherings. Laughter rang out, stories were shared. And then, as the dessert plates were whisked away, the waiter approached with the climax of the evening, the bill. He leaned indiscreetly and murmured, The staggering dinner cost $66,000. I handed over my credit card, my action going unnoticed by most. Then, with a strange smirk, Jack decided to drop his bombshell. Linda, it's time for the truth. I'm done with this, with us. I want a divorce. His words hung heavily in the air, 
suffocating the room. Before I could fully process his announcement, Sophia, sharp and unyielding, interjected. Well then, now that that's out in the open, it's best you leave, Linda. Tonight is about family, and, well, you're no longer part of ours. The room fell into a hushed silence, every gaze fixed on me, awaiting my response. But I refused to crumble. With a composure I didn't truly feel, I rose from my seat, nodded, and departed without a word. The chill of the night air slapped against my skin as I made my way home, the weight of finality crashing over me in waves. By the time I reached our apartment, I had a plan. I gathered my essentials, my numbness morphing into steely determination. This was the end of one chapter and the beginning of another. As I sealed my last suitcase, my phone buzzed incessantly. Initially, I ignored it, but curiosity got the better of me, and Sophia's voice erupted from the other end. Linda, the payment didn't go through. You need to fix this right away, Sophia's voice demanded. The irony was bittersweet. In my preparations, I had blocked access to the shared account, anticipating it would be Jack's first move. Oh, Sophia, what a shame. But since I'm no longer considered part of the family, as you've made abundantly clear, I'm afraid you'll have to handle this matter on your own, I replied calmly. Her indignation crackled through the phone, but it was a symphony to my ears. The ensuing chaos was a fitting conclusion to the charade my marriage had become. I heard tales of the restaurant staff demanding payment, Sophia's escalating fits, and eventually the police being called to defuse the situation she had incited. In the end, it was Jack and his kin who scrambled to settle the bill, a poetic retribution for the betrayal and indignity. They had subjected me to the morning after the dinner felt like emerging from a tempest. Armed with my plan, my determination, and a stack of divorce papers in hand, I returned to what once was our shared abode for the final time. The atmosphere was tense, palpable, as if it could be sliced with a blade. Jack and Sophia stood there, seemingly embroiled in a heated exchange. Their animosity toward me seemed to merge into a unified front of fury upon my arrival. You've got some nerve showing your face here after last night, Jack spat, his features twisted in a mixture of anger and disbelief. Quick to echo his sentiment, Sophia hurled her own barbs. You've brought shame upon us in front of the entire city. Do you comprehend the humiliation of having the police summoned on account of your actions? People were laughing, filming. I met their fury with a composure I hardly felt. Shame is that your primary concern right now, I retorted, tossing the divorce papers onto the table, placing the incriminating photos of Jack's infidelity atop them. Perhaps you should direct your attention to this instead. Jack's complexion drained of color as he picked up the damning photographs, with his mother looming over his shoulder. Their rage dissolved into shock, then morphed into panic as they comprehended the gravity of the situation. And let's not overlook the prenup, shall we? I pressed on, my voice unwavering. You stray, you pay. Precisely $200,000. Sophia's features contorted into a snarl. You wouldn't dare. You can't do this to us. Oh, but I can, and I will. I retorted, my voice devoid of warmth, resolute in my decision. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, Jack altered his approach. Please, let's discuss this. We can find a solution. I couldn't suppress a bitter, mirthless laugh. Find a solution? You think a few words can undo everything, Jack? It's over. Sophia, ever the master manipulator, 
attempted to soften her stance, her tone dripping with false concern. Linda, darling, think about what you're doing. This will destroy us. That ship has sailed, Sophia. You should have considered that before, I declared, their pleas shifting to desperate entreaties, their words a frantic attempt to salvage whatever remained. But my mind was resolute. I was done playing the victim, done with their deceit and manipulation. In the end, Jack had no recourse but to borrow money from his parents to settle with me. As I departed from that house for the final time, check in hand, I felt a burden lift from my shoulders. After all that transpired, I was finally liberated. I used the money from Jack to secure a down payment on a modest yet snug abode of my own. It's remarkable how much tranquility you can find in a residence that's solely yours, where each nook feels like a sanctuary away from the tumult of the past. Life is calmer now, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I have a job that keeps me occupied, amiable neighbors who offer nods and smiles, and a petite garden that's entirely mine to tend to. Occasionally, I catch wind of gossip concerning Jack and Sophia. Just the other day, while grabbing coffee from the local spot frequented by the community, I bumped into an acquaintance from the old neighborhood. After some polite chit-chat, they leaned in, lowering their voice, and whispered, Hey, have you heard the latest scoop about your ex and his mom? Their eyes gleamed with intrigue. I arched an eyebrow, intrigued yet detached. Can't say that I have. Do share, I prompted. They seem to relish divulging the news. Apparently, Sophia isn't too thrilled with Jack's new girlfriend. Rumor has it, they're quarreling like there's no tomorrow. Puts your situation in a whole new light, they remarked. We moved on from the topic, but as I strolled away with my coffee, I felt a profound sense of relief. There was a time when such news would have unsettled me but now it's simply another chapter in someone else's tale. These days, my greatest worries revolve around whether my tomatoes will ripen before the squirrels snatch them, or if I'll ever master yoga without resembling a newborn deer. Life is simpler, quieter, and considerably sweeter on this side of the chaos. <laughs>